This video is a quick walkthrough of the XCP platform as I've demoed here in my test environment. Um, I'm just going to run down through this material, go over and hit all the highlights, move some machines around and that sort of thing. Should be a short video just to demo what we've got built here. Just to let everybody know, this is Zen Center. This is the not free version. It's uh, effectively operating on a trial. Um, this tool is optional. This Zen Center thing, there's a Python version of this that you can use. There are multiple web clients. This doesn't really matter, but this should give us a nice clean interface for the demo and a good overview of what exactly we have going on. Now, the Zen Pool is my cloud, if you will, and it's made up of two cloud hosts and an open filer storage box. All three of these boxes are commodity desktop hardware. They're uh, just HP workstations. I have them sitting here next to me on my desk. They're all sharing a single 3COM gigabit switch. It's all really low end. And you can see that we've got dual cores. I've got 2 gigs of RAM in this box. I've got 4 gigs of RAM in that box. But otherwise, these are relatively mundane. Um, and I've defined some my SCSI targets for these different virtual machines that I've built, as well as an NFS library to store the ISOs. And I'll cover that in, in just a moment. Okay, so basic idea here is the Zen pool contains the storage and the two cloud hosts. And these are going to be the two machines that can host VMs. So I could create a new VM, walk through the wizard, and then specify where in the cloud it's going to live. Save time, I've already done that. I've got an Ubuntu server, which is not para virtualized. Uh, it was installed from CD. And it's just a full-blown, ordinary uh, Ubuntu server. Okay. I also have an Ubuntu server made from the template using the web, and it's, it's these uh, Zen templates that are used in order to cause the machine to come down in a para-virtualized mode. And I've done some work after the fact to get the console of this device working. And so let's start this machine right now. If I can right-click on it and choose Start, it's just going to decide where to start it. I can start it on the home server, which is specified as CloudHost 1, or I can manually specify it on CloudHost 2. Let's go ahead and start it on CloudHost 2. You see we have our little yellow icon for the machine because it's starting. And here in just a moment, it's going to appear, and it's going to pop up on our CloudHost 2. All right, there it is. We have a console for it. Serial console is coming up here. Remember earlier when I mentioned the NFS storage, that's this. We can choose these ISOs that I've uploaded to that device. It's very nice, much better, I think, than the way ESXi handles it anyway. Um, once this starts, it will register the graphical console, and I'll be able to switch to that and kind of give you a little bit better idea. But I also have RDP built so that I can remote desktop into that graphical console. And you should be able to see now that my little test box is up and running. Demos being what they are, I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't work, but it worked just a minute ago. So, All right, there's the X Windows session. We'll let that run. That's going to go ahead and load into uh, GDM, Ubuntu Desktop. Again, this machine, though it was tied to CloudHost 1, actually started on CloudHost 2 because I told it to. Um, and we're going to move it here in just a moment. Now, this is our Windows server. This is server R2 SP1. It's got the Zen tools installed and nothing else. It's actually a straight from DVD install of server SP1, R2, 64-bit. And so I'm just going to tell it to start. It's going to start right where it's at. Switch to the console. It was still there from when it was shutting down. These are virtual machines, so they boot really fast, as you'd come to expect. These machines for their storage devices are pointed at the iSCSI. Uh, I've actually done discrete uh, iSCSI targeting for these individual boxes. That's not strictly necessary, but I, I was just doing it for experimentation purposes. You see that this is now coming online. Let's switch back over to our other one. Here's our graphical console. For those of you who have used Ubuntu, that should look pretty familiar. Okay, just going to minimize that remote desktop. I've got the button to switch to the graphical console here as well, uh, either text or graphical. Uh, the graphical console in that is being driven by VNC. It's um, relatively no frills, but it did take a little bit of research to get this set up. Excuse me, uh, to find some way to actually do it. Okay, here's our Windows server. And we're just going to be patient for just a moment and wait for it to come up before we start messing with it. All right, there we are. 
You can see it was only in a few moments. Again, this is desktop hardware. These are running on SATA drives. It's it's not a discrete network. It's a, the uh, uh, corporate network, with the exception of the fact that I'm on my own switch. Very very low budget. Very simple. All right. So let's say CloudHost One is great, but I need to take it offline because I've got an orange light on the disk. It's an actual server all of a sudden, and uh, it's thrown a disk, or in some other way needs service. So I need to move this box. Because I have the Zen tools installed, I can migrate it right out of the menu. So I right-click the server and I choose CloudHost 2. And I migrate it over to CloudHost 2. What it's doing in the background is pausing the virtual machine, saving the state, much like you would hibernate a laptop. So we have our migrating window here. And it should be moved. Okay, should already be back up. Just my console being a little bit slow. So now it's running on the other host of the cloud. It's that easy. It can do this because the clouds are in the same pool and they're aware of each other and the clouds are both aware of the same storage. Super, super simple. Now the Ubuntu server from CD is not aware of the hypervisor. I couldn't do that in this example. Um, and we won't bring that box on right now, but it would not let me move it. I would have to shut it down and then move it. I couldn't move it hot. But here's our Ubuntu server from template. And if you remember, I'm remoted in. And let's just see what happens if I move it while I'm remoted in. Told it to move. This is my remote desktop. It doesn't appear to have lost me yet. I click the button. Let's see, we may have inter uh, experienced just a momentary loss of connection. But you see the server is moved. It's still coming online. All right, so I got kicked out of my remote desktop session. I reconnect. It should be right there. Demos being what they are, you'll understand if it doesn't all work perfectly. But that's the basic idea for the cloud. I can move these boxes to and fro because they have shared storage and the hosts are aware of each other. If this was not commodity desktop hardware, if this was actual server class hardware, we'd be seeing some even better performance and some more capabilities. Um, and chances are the technician yours truly has messed something up in this pair of virtualization box. Not exactly sure. We can look into that later, but you see the machine did move and boot. And Windows, which is my company's primary concern, is fine. It doesn't even care. Uh, it was actually much, much easier to configure than Linux, which is almost backwards in a scenario like this. I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. If you have any questions, please contact me at my email below. Thank you very much.